Well, good morning and welcome to episode three of our new podcast, Next Step. Uh, today we'll be talking about uh, the, the next step that really kind of has something to do with uh, our, our first step of, of baptism. But many times as Christians move on and get moved to different areas, it kind of changes a little bit um, because they're no longer in the church where they were baptized. So we separated that to do its own podcast and to be able to do it justice scripturally. Um, and so I did want to read um, just a few verses today before we get going, because Pastor Morales said something yesterday before we signed off that I thought was is very relative, uh, relevant, uh, rather, uh, even here uh, with this topic uh, of, of church membership. And so Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2 says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And we want to really focus on that that, that last sentence, the, the perfect will of God. And so uh, we, we talked a little bit yesterday uh, about the, the general will of God and the specific will of God. Um, and, and every Christian needs to, to, to seek and to submit to the, the general will of God, which is the perfect will of God, generally speaking, um, and then to be able to get into the specific will of what he has for each and every one of us. Uh, with me today, again, is Pastor Morales. How are you doing today, Pastor? We're doing well, and praise the Lord, we're excited. We're glad that uh, we're able to do these. Hopefully, these are a help to, to a lot of folks. Absolutely, absolutely. And so, as we talk a little bit about the, the general will of God and, and the... And the and the specific will of God. Now we realize that that we enter into God's general perfect will upon salvation. We talked about standing in Christ, right? Pastor Morales, you mentioned Amen. God's will that that all should come to repentance, and so that's, that's the right. will of God for everybody. And so, Amen. and so as we enter into that first step of obedience, which of, which of course is believers' baptism that we talked about yesterday, um, that's us taking our first step uh, towards continuing to walk with God. And to, to stay in and, and continue to go through the general will of God. Uh, we, we mentioned yesterday, um, you know, the Great Commission, how first it's towards us, right? I need to get saved. I need to be baptized. And, which, and in so doing, as we're going to find out here today, uh, makes me a member of a local New Testament church. And then uh -huh. I need to be discipled. And then I need to turn around and, and, and teach and get people saved and baptized and, and, and discuss church membership and then uh, disciple people as well. And so... Amen. Um, in this day and age of Christianity, um, much much is not talked about and, and taught on church membership, and, and really it's it's essential uh, in uh, living the victorious Christian life, just as much so as baptism is at that original point. And so, why do you think that is that that many uh, people out there aren't teaching on on why it is uh, God's will for every Christian to be a member of a true New Testament local church? I truly believe the biggest hindrance to church membership and church membership being taught uh, as the Bible uh, prescribes it is the fact that people are mis teaching or teaching incorrectly the doctrine of the, uh, the church. Mm -hmm. And there's this teaching out there that the church is made up of all born again believers and the church of Jesus Christ is all who are saved. It's called the universal church in other terms, it's been called the Catholic Church, not referring to the Roman Catholic Church, but referring to uh, the Church of All Believers. Now, and, 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 and the Catholic Church ahead. is named that way because they believe in universal church. So that that false yeah. doctrine comes from them. Correct. And the problem with that is that it it basically neuters the local church. Mm -hmm. uh, people who believe, and 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 you and I agree, and Pastor Mason would agree with us that. Uh, this is not taught in scripture. It's not taught in, in the in the Bible. Right. The problem is that when you believe in the universal church and all believers are made up of the church, then as soon as you're saved, you're in the church. You're a member of the church. So you don't have to make a commitment to a local body of believers, which is what the Bible calls the church. Uh, the church is a local called out assembly of baptized believers. Uh, the, the word that we know uh, in the Greek that's translated in English church is ecclesia. And uh, Pastor Suglio, let me know if I'm getting ahead of us here, but um, uh, ecclesia means called out assembly. Right. And at no point in time 
will all believers, at least not here on earth, will all that are saved, all that are born again, all that have trusted Christ as their Savior, will they assemble? Now, we will assemble uh, when eventually in the future. Right. Together, we will be called out of this world and assemble to the Lord. And then uh, there will be all Christians as part of that church, that assembly. But not right now. Right now, uh, each letter that's written uh, to the Church of God at Rome, to the Church of God at Corinth, you know, these are local churches of called out, baptized believers that assemble. It's a physical assembling, and so it's it's not a universal church. But that's the biggest problem, I think. Yeah, you're right. And maybe at some point down the road, we will actually do a a podcast specifically on local church versus universal church. Now, of course, we believe that every born again believer that has been scripturally baptized uh, is in the family of God. We are Amen. sons of God, and so there's a that's difference right. between being in a, a member of a local church and being in the family of God. I can call a Christian uh, in a different state my brother in Christ because we're in the same family of God. But like he is not in my my church family I- anymore because I'm a part of a local church here and them back in Cleveland are in a local church there. And so Amen. let me ask you, Pastor Miles, who should be a member of a true New Testament local church? Well, every, every born-again believer, everyone that's saved should be part of a true New Testament local church. Uh, we should all make that that uh, physical so to speak commitment uh, because of the spiritual transaction that has taken place uh, now we are part of god's family uh, as all christians are but now we need to be a part of god's program part of god's program and god's program here on earth the way that god is working uh, in this day of uh, this age of grace is through the local new testament church and uh, again, if, if if we were to take a lot of time, well, we don't want to do that right now, but we could take a lot of time to explain, uh, you know, the perpetuity of the church, the power of the church. Uh, God has given the promise of he's going to work through his church, which is the local New Testament church, not not through some invisible universal entity that, you know, because, again, you know, we're, we're told we're taught in Matthew 18. That if we have an offense, a brother has offended us, you know, we're to go to our brother and try to make that thing right. If he doesn't hear us, we're to take two or three witnesses. Go ahead, Pastor Sugreo. And, and, we, and we do have that. We will, we will cover that today, that okay. portion of Scripture. But, okay, amen. But, but what you said really triggered me to think, or the individual, right? Not, not, not mm-hmm. just a group, but even the individual. And, and God designed that for a reason, right? You know, we're more of a picture of the Holy Spirit who, who doesn't talk about himself but points others to Christ. And the reason why God has done this, and again, we'll go over this more in length as we get through our outline, um, but the reason he does this is so so that Christ gets the glory, that that God gets glorified, and not me as an individual or or, or a a certain group as an individual, but that God gets glory through the local church, you know, as the bride and and, and as husband. And so a couple of verses I have here to to talk about uh, what Pastor Morales is answering. Every born-again believer who has been scripturally baptized uh, should be a member of a true New Testament local church. And he mentioned it yesterday, Acts chapter 2, verse 41. And really, I would say uh, Acts chapter 2, verse 41 through 47 is the goal of every local church. That should be the spirit of what we're going for uh, on a local church lover. That is when God is really working, when you have that unity throughout the local church. And Acts chapter 2, verse 41 says, Then they that gladly received his word, they heard the preaching of the gospel, they put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ, they were born again, and then they were baptized. And the same day, as Pastor Morales uh, mentioned yesterday, the same day they were baptized, they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Now, of course, the Bible teaches that Jesus started the church and and builds the church. Uh, It wasn't started on the day of Pentecost, so the church was already in effect. And so at at this point, 3,000 on the day of Pentecost are added unto that original 120 that was left when the Lord Jesus Christ uh, rose again and then ascended into heaven. Uh, Verse 47 of the same chapter says, Praising God and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. And so you see salvation, baptism, church membership. And so um, as, as we move on, we understand, um, you know, we're going to get into and kind of look at this verse again. Uh, and I would ask the question, well, what or how does every born-again believer who has been scripturally baptized join a, two, a, a true New Testament local church? And, of course, the first one is, is right there at baptism. Right, Pastor? Yeah. 
Yes. And so, you know, uh, we've, we've said it, we've heard it. Uh, church membership, the door of church membership uh, swings on the hinges of baptism. Right. So baptism is the doorway to church membership. And if we think of the Great Commission, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Uh, so those are commands. We're commanded to go. We're commanded to teach. We're commanded to baptize and we're commanded to disciple. So the fact that we're commanded to go and to baptize by implication, not directly by it, but it's implied, it's implied that we're commanded to be a member of a church. Because when we're baptized, as Acts chapter 2 and verse 41 says, we, we become a member. We're added to that same day that we're, we're baptized, we're added to the church role, the church membership. And so if, if we're commanded to be baptized and baptism is the door to church membership, then by implication, God is commanding every Christian to be a member of a local New Testament church. That's why there can't be any Lone Ranger Christians. There shouldn't be. I mean, there are, yeah. uh, but there shouldn't be. Right. And there shouldn't be anyone that's just kind of doing Christianity on their own. Uh, we're not made to do this alone. We're made to do this in in, in conjunction with others. Yeah. Um, God said it in Genesis, referring to marriage, it's not good that man should be alone. Well, marriage isn't, you know, you can't do it by yourself. You can't live life by yourself. You can't live the Christian life by yourself. You need the local New Testament church to help you, to encourage you. Mm -hmm. And so that's, it's very important. Yeah. And so, and so I, I think another reason is, you know, a lot of, we don't have much scripture uh, talking about, you know, hundred years down the road, a thousand years down the road, because these were all first generation Christians. And so they were members upon salvation. And we have a few verses and we're going to go into them later. Um, but it's important for us to realize in this day and age, I um, mean, you know, I got saved in April of 2011. I was baptized and became a member of the Cleveland Baptist Church uh, a couple of weeks later. Now, once I moved to Florida, Orlando, Florida, where you and I met, I needed to, as soon as I got there, uh, find a church. And once I settled on a church where the Lord would have me and my family to go, we had to join that church. And so I, 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 had, I never was not a member of a church. I moved, I found another church, and I became a member. And then when Amen. we called us back to Cleveland, same thing happened. We, we moved to Cleveland, and, and we had to rejoin that church. Uh, and then, again, the same thing happened here. And, and the thing is, it's not just because we're in, we're in uh, ministry. It's because my move to Florida and my move back to Cleveland, I was just a layman. I was working a regular job. Um, and so every born-again believer, if they leave the church or, or the area of where that church was where they were, they were baptized, they need to find and merge up with a, a, a true New Testament local church. Uh, and, of course, they wouldn't be baptized again because you're only baptized once, right? And that's a conversation. Um, but the next thing would be that they would join by what we would call a letter, what we call a letter. And so as somebody joins a church, um, the church where they came from would send a letter saying, yes, so-and-so was a member of our church. You know, they were baptized here, or we got a letter from somewhere else where they were baptized with. And that's kind of how it goes on. And there's there's a few portions of scripture. There's actually quite a bit that mentioned it. I put down just a few, though, uh, where, where Paul is actually sending uh, a letter, an epistle that he had written uh, with somebody that was uh, leaving the church where he was at and joining the church where he was going. And so in Romans chapter 16, verse 1 and 2, uh, the Bible says, I command unto you Phoebe, our sister. I'm, you know, I'm sending Phoebe, our sister. She's a Christian. She's a sister in Christ, which is a servant of the church, uh, which is at Centria. So, so the church where she was a member at was Centria. She's going to the church at Rome. And, and, and Paul says in verse 2, that ye received her in the Lord as become its saints, and that ye assist her in whatsoever business she hath need of you. And so the idea is, hey, she's a member of this church, and she's serving the God, she's serving the Lord, she's faithful, and now she's moving over there, and she's going to join that church. And so he, he's, he's, he's basically, you know, vouching for her, so to say. Amen. In Philemon, Amen. verses 1 and 2, it says, Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ, and Timothy, our brother, unto Philemon, our dearly beloved and fellow labor, and to the, our beloved Aphia and Acropius, our fellow soldier, and to the church in thy house. And so he's writing a letter, yes, to an individual named Philemon, but also uh, to a church, a local church uh, that was meeting in, in this these people's house. And then in verse 10, he says, I beseech her, I beg thee for my son Onesimus. This is the man that Paul led to Christ where he was, where he became a member of that church where Paul was. 
whom I have begotten in my bonds, I've led them to the Lord while I'm in prison here, which in times past was to thee unprofitable, but now profitable to thee and to me, whom I have sent again, thou therefore receive him, receive him that is mine own bowels. And so you see here that he's saying, hey, this man was got saved, he was baptized, he's a member of this church here in good standing, and now I'm sending him to you, receive him into your into your fellowship, into your true New Testament local church. And again, there's many other instances in the Bible that I just picked out a, a few. And then lastly, we would say, uh, you could join our church or any church, any true New Testament local church by a statement of faith. Um, you know, in my situation, I've always left a church uh, where there, you know, I had just left the church and went, went back, you know, and joined the church pretty quickly. Uh, but sometimes it may happen where somebody has been out of church uh, away from the Lord for years, and now they're trying to get back uh, in, in, uh, into a true New Testament church. Um, and, and the church where they were originally saved isn't in existence anymore. There's no records. Uh, maybe, you know, there was a fire and they can't have any, any, any proof of uh, their baptism or anything like that. And so that statement of faith would basically be, um, correct me if I'm wrong here, Pastor, would basically be me telling you as a pastor of a church, I, I, I have been born again, you know, according to the scriptures. I've been baptized scripturally by a true New Testament local church, uh, and I was a member of the church, and I, and I believe uh, what the Bible truly teaches, which is what your church believes, and I'm, by my statement of faith, I am uh, wanting to join up with you. Is that correct? Amen. That's correct. Yeah, and and you you, you hit it, hit the nail right on the head, especially uh, for the the statement of faith. If if for some reason the church that the person was baptized at and was a member of, if that church folded, you know it's possible. Unfortunately, the, yeah. these things happen. Uh, if that church folded and it's no longer in existence, then they have no one to get records from. Uh, so the, we shouldn't stop them from joining uh, just because they don't have a letter uh, but by their statement of faith we're trusting that what they're saying is accurate and uh we're we're taking them at their word so to speak uh, but yes they have to admit that you know they've been biblically saved by faith uh, alone in christ alone and that they've been scripturally baptized uh, by a tr true new testament local church um and if they if they state state that uh that's why it's called statement right mm -hmm. if they state that then and we accept them. Okay. And, and, and I'd go you know, a step further to say, again, as we talked about, and you're going to hear us say a lot, there's ditches on both sides of the road, right? Some churches let anybody uh, come in and join, and you have unsaved people, you know, doing ungodly things that end up uh, teaching and, and uh, serving in ministries, even in, even in nurseries and things like that. And then you have people on the other end of the spectrum, which, again, as we said yesterday, you know, salvation is come as I am, you know, let the, the Lord clean somebody up. Baptism is as long as you believe in Jesus, you may be baptized. But all of a sudden, church membership, you know, they want to make it so hard to join a, a church and, and really hindering somebody's spiritual growth because you're, you're, you're keeping somebody out of the will of God. Now, again, obviously, there's extreme circumstances and there's times where you may have to say, well, listen, you know, you need to, to, to you know, make sure that the motive of somebody is correct and they're not just trying to get the guard the block, right? There's wolves in sheep's clothing. But at the end of the day, all of it is a statement of faith, right? Because only I know that, and, and the Lord and me know that I'm born again. Nobody else can truly say that because it's, it's an inward an inward thing. You know, That's right. At the end of the day, you know, you're taking someone's word regardless you know if they have a letter uh you know they could have lied to the previous church you know they could have and i'm not saying that that happens but it could happen yeah it could happen. at the end of the day um this is the next step the next step first first thing is be saved say first step after salvation baptism and that leads directly to church membership mm -hmm. and we, we have to emphasize the fact that if we're not following these specific steps that are the general will of god for all people then god's not going to continue to give us the specific will for our own personal life we have to submit to and do and obey the general will of god for all people if we're not saved we need to get saved if we're saved and we're not scripturally baptized we need to get baptized if we're scripturally baptized and we're not a member of a church because we've ch moved or whatever the case may be we need to be a member of a church uh, we need to make that commitment yeah I, I can't tell you how many times that i've counseled with people and i'm sure uh, probably three times the amount that you have uh, where they come with problems and issues or they just don't really know what the lord would have for them and then as we talk to them we realize you know one of these major general will of god uh 
steps hasn't been taken, or maybe like you said, they w- it was taken, they were baptized, but they're not currently a member. Yeah, and I like what Pastor Mick says. I, I agree wholeheartedly. He says, hey, uh, let's quit shacking up with the Lord Jesus. Let's make a commitment. You know, let's 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 make it official. Let's, uh, as the uh, colloquial phrase that we use nowadays, let's put a ring on it, you know, yeah, so yeah. to speak. And that's making it official. Yeah. Well, you're right. You're right. 100. percent And 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 again, as we, as we get into the our, the, the last uh, point here, which we're, we're we're getting close to finishing, um, is, is is the fact that you know we want to stress to people, um, this isn't for our benefit um, as pastors of a church or for the church's benefit. It's for the individual's benefit. You know, we have done Amen. this as as laymen. And as pastors, we are also members of this church, and we need to be a member of a church. Just because you're a pastor doesn't mean that you are, are exempt. And so That's this right. is for the, 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 the benefit of everybody listening uh, to make sure that we're in the general will of God, that we're taking the proper steps to be able to get towards that specific will, because that's where the abundant Christian life is. That's where the victorious Christian life is. That's where the fruit is and the peace Amen. and the joy is. And so that's why we're taking time to do this uh, to today. And so um, let me ask you this question. When, okay, obviously upon baptism, somebody's a member, but, but if somebody is to move away, when should a born again believer that has always been scripturally baptized or that has already been scripturally baptized uh, become a member or stay a member of a true New Testament church? When should when? As soon as possible. As soon as possible. Uh, they should uh, be attempting to be a member of a local church everywhere they live. Um, mm-hmm. You know, like you said, stated earlier, when you have made moves and your, uh, your family has moved, uh, you've been saved. Well, you you found a a good biblical, doctrinally sound uh, local New Testament church, and you joined it. Yeah. Uh, when you moved back, when you moved again, you did the same thing. I've done that every single time I've moved, and I've moved quite a bit, unfortunately, uh, in various states. But every time, I I find a local, biblically sound, doctrinally sound New Testament local church. And I join that church. I make it official. Uh, I'm officially tithing, serving, giving, contributing to this local congregation of believers for the cause of Christ and for the cause of world evangelization. So because if if not, you know, and I I know I'm straying a little bit, but uh, from the notes, but if we don't, we'll be we'll become these lone ranger christians that uh uh, unfortunately give our attention to parachurch organizations and again i stated yesterday parachurch organizations are good but they're not god's program they're not what god has given his stamp of approval to and on Uh, he's given his stamp of approval to and on the local new testament church and so if i'm the tithe my tithe is to go to the local new testament church not to some preacher on the radio not to the red cross uh not to samaritan's purse all these are good good organizations but they're not the local church. Uh, the, the local church is the one that has the authority to evangelize the world, uh, not Samaritan's Spurs, not the Red Cross, uh, not any of these other parachurch organizations, but the local church. And so I, I would say it's, it's safe to say you know, we see a pattern developing, right? People want salvation, but they want it their way. And God says, this yep. is the only way. I am the way. I am the truth and the life. They want baptism, but they want their version of it or their, or their family tradition of it, sprinkling, pouring, um, you know, before salvation, a certain day, a big, big you know, celebration. And same thing with church membership. They, they want to they serve God, but they want to do it their way. And God says, no, yeah. this is the, to, to truly be in my will. You know, we're not disobeying anybody other than the Lord Jesus Christ himself uh, by That's trying right. to do these things, you know, our way. Because remember, we don't get blessed for doing right and for not doing wrong. We get blessed for, for doing doing right and not doing wrong, but with the proper motive, right? Yep. And, and, and yep. by doing it the way we want to do it, man, that, that's not right. We're not we're not fully submitted to God. We're not fully right with God. And so that brings us to our last point, and that is that is again the, the application. The most important reason uh, of, of of this whole topic is is why should we be a member of a of a local New Testament church? Why should we always be a member of a local church? And number one, it would be because we want to be in the will of God, and he commands us to, right? I mean, as Pastor mentioned it early, uh, earlier and yesterday, this is a commandment of God. And, and if by, us, by us not doing it, we're being disobedient. And by us, yep. 
kind of serving and kind of doing some things, but not uh, doing it God's way. Uh, what I say to my children and, and to children that I teach at the church is partial obedience is disobedience. That's right. And, and scripture bears that out. The reason I say that so often is because it's found in scripture over and over and over again. Amen. And J Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. And of course, as Pastor mentioned earlier, uh, verse 19 of Matthew 28, the Great Commission, he says, go ye therefore to teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And so again, that at first is directed towards the individual. I need to be saved. I need to be baptized. I need to be a member of a church. And then afterwards, it's, it's for us to then turn around and be a part of that member, that local church and go ourselves and be a part of that process. And so, and so it, is, it is directly disobedient to a command of God by not being a member of a local church. And then point number two says, so we can enjoy the protection that comes with being in his will in the church. And so, uh, Pastor, I think you want to read through those, those verses that we have in Matthew. Uh, you were talking about it a little bit earlier, and I think that'll kind of flow with that. Okay, this is foundational here. This is Matthew 16, 18, and 19, where the Bible says, And I say also unto thee, this is the Lord Jesus speaking, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And uh, he says in verse 19, and I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Now, uh, we understand that the Catholic Church teaches that now, based on what this the Lord Jesus says here, that the Apostle Peter is the foundation of the church. And we know from studying this passage that that's not true because God is making, the Lord Jesus is making a comparison. He says, thou art Peter, you're a small pebble, uh, and upon this rock, referring to a large boulder, referring to himself, I will build and, and, and Not church. only himself, but also the uh, the statement that Peter made previously. Again, they put that's right. context. The, the, the statement was, thou art the Christ, the son of the That's Lord. right. Because he asked them, and, and that's a very good point, he asked them, you know, who who do men say that I am? And they say, well, some think you're Elias, some think you're this or that, some prophet risen from the dead, whatever the case may be. And he says, well, whom do ye say that I am? And Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And the Lord Jesus is saying, that is what I'm going to build my church on right there. That statement that you made, that confession uh, that you that you just stated. Uh, and so we have to make sure we understand the Lord Jesus is building the church on himself, not on Peter. And, and, and as we see in, in, uh, in chapter 28, verse 18, he said, I have the power and I'm sending you to go. Same That's thing right. here. He's saying, you know, upon this profession, upon me, I will build my church and I'm giving the keys or the, or the authority to do my Amen. work, to do my bidding to that local church establishment. Correct. He's make that's the commissioning. He's I'm commissioning you to be my hands and feet here. While I'm not here, you, the local church, are going to do what I would do if I were here. Yeah. Right. Amen. And I love this next passage in Matthew 18, verses 17 and 18. We talked about it earlier. Uh, if if uh, a brother has offended me, I go to him personally. Uh, if he doesn't listen to me, doesn't hear me out, then I bring I bring to him two or three witnesses. And if he doesn't hear or listen to me and these two or three witnesses, the Bible says in Matthew 18, 17, if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as a heathen man and a publican, publican rather. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Now, notice this here. He says, if he doesn't listen to you and your witnesses, tell it to the church. Again, tell it to the assembly. Never will we be able to gather all Christians on planet earth, right? And say, you know, I'm going to bring this, this, this issue to you as a church because you know he wouldn't listen to me he wouldn't listen to me and the witnesses and i'm going to bring it to every single christian on the planet are we going to gather them somewhere and bring this 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 problem to no he's referring to the local church the local called out assembly and so that's very important yeah absolutely and again you see here the same terminology in, in matthew 16 you know, proving the existence of the already first church that the lord Amen. Jesus christ himself you know founded and of course you know, again, this isn't done to hurt the individual. And again, we need to look at this from, from the lens of ourselves also. You know, and what he's saying is we have to, we have to you know, um, treat him as such, as, as an unsaved man, as, as far as voting him out of the church, 
Um, and there's a reason for that. You know, the, the reason is that the, the, that God will protect that local church and the members thereof. And so we need to be a member to be a part of that protection. And the reason he's voted out is not to hurt him. Uh, well, maybe a little bit of pain, but, but to, to, to ultimately you know, correct him and get him back right with God. First Corinthians 5, 5 tells us to deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. And again, so it's the idea is not to, to hurt the person, but a little bit of pain now to save the long term, you know, uh, pain and suffering and sorrow. Now, just like as we, we, we discipline our children, uh, we do it not to hurt them, but to keep them from big pain down the road. Uh, the Amen. The verses of 1 Corinthians 5 says, For what have I to do, judge them also that are without? Do not ye judge them uh, that are within, but them that are God, or with, I'm sorry, but them that are without God judgeth. Therefore put away from among yourselves that wicked person. And so again, it's to keep uh, the, the protection that God offers only through the, lo the local church uh, for, for those members that are in right standing. Yeah, and to, to make sure that their unrighteous, unholy influence is not, is not there towards the other Christians of that local, yeah. uh, that local church. Yeah, I mean, it's to protect the, 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 the member and their children, you know, and it's to protect, yeah. you know, if, if you're listening to this, it's to protect your children. You know, not, Amen. Not, not um, you know, it's not to, not to make anybody do anything. Oh, you need to do this. No, it's, it's you should want to do this, and God will bless that and protect Amen. you from that. And then lastly, we see the last, the last way, again, is not, not that you can't still serve the Lord, right? You can grab gospel tracts and go and hand them out. Uh, but, but God has chosen uh, and, and will bless uh, doing right with the proper motive, and that is through the local church. And so, again, the last reason we see why we should be members of a local church always is so we could serve the Lord. And Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22 through 24 says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your husbands as unto the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Uh, many people think that this is just a teaching on, on marriage. Uh, verse 32 clears this up. It says, this is a great mystery, uh, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. So I'm, I'm, I'm using a marriage as, a, as an example, as an illustration to prove the relationship between a church and, and, and the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Verse 33 says, nevertheless, even though I'm using that as an illustration, it's still good practice, right? Let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. And so us, as being members of a church, that church, uh, we make up the, the members or the body parts of the bride of Christ that is to reverence our husband, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You're right. And, and, and that is not, again, it, it tells us in Ephesians 5, 32 and 33, that he's talking about Christ and the church. It's not just for marriage, mm -hmm. although it is, but it's also a, a picture, a, a, an analogy. Uh, this is how we are to conduct ourselves within the church, yeah. within the local body of believers. Amen. Yeah, First Peter 2, 5 says, Ye also as lively or living stones, right, we're alive, we're living stones, are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices. That's that's our gift of, of leading others to the Lord, getting them baptized and discipled, right? Spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. But again, it's talking about us as individuals being stones or, or body parts uh, in the spiritual house or the, the church house, right? And again, it's, it's showing us the same thing. And then back in Romans chapter 12, we started off with verses 1 and 2, and we're going to end with verses 3 through 5. And at a later point, as we're going on talking about next steps, we're going to continue through the spiritual gifts that are still around and active today. It's found, I believe, in Romans chapter 12, verses 6 through 9. And so we're going to, these are the verses that, that lead up prior to that. And again, it's talking about the church, the local church. And so uh, verse 3 says, For I say through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, right, to, who is among you, not that you can't see, but who is actually among you, a local called out assembly gathered together uh, among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. And so whatever gifts we do have are given by God, so we shouldn't be too proud in it or, or think that our gift is more important than somebody else's. Because God, as you said earlier, Jesus builds the church, and so he gives us people that could preach 
and teach and those that can organize and do all those things. But it's he, he's the one who built it and he's the one who's given us the gifts. The, verse four says, for as we have mem many members in one body, all members have not the same office. So we being many are one body in Christ, every one members one of another. Pastor Folger used to always say in Cleveland, uh, Pastor Morales, that uh, I don't know about you, but the, I don't remember the last time that my arm was in Europe and my body was here in Cleveland. And, and we, are, we are members one of another. A building, again, we, we see two illustrations, right? A body and a building. And again, a body is always locally together in one place, and a building is always locally together in one place. Amen. That's a great that's a great point. And it just again, it just emphasizes once again, it's a local New Testament church. It's not a universal, invisible, Catholic, you know, everybody mystical, you know, that, that even sounds kind of spooky. But um, we will gather together all at once when the Lord raptures us and and we're all gathered together in heaven. Uh, but that's not now. That's not now. That's right. So, so this is going to conclude our podcast for today. We pray it was a blessing and an encouragement. Again, if you have any questions, I believe my wife's getting pretty good on the back end stuff with the editing. And so I believe she's going to be able to put on the end of this our email address. And so we want to hear from you. You know, Email us if you have any questions, any concerns, any comments, uh, something maybe a topic that you would like to talk about, anything at all. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to see that, that the, what the Lord has given us to do um, is being a blessing to others. And again, if we're here to help in any which way, shape or form. Amen. I want to uh, just say a uh, great job to Miss Rebecca. She's doing a fantastic job with all the uh, behind the scenes details with the podcast. And uh, thanks so much for listening again. We hope uh, we hope we've been an encouragement to you. And uh, please contact us if we can help you or bless you in any way. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day.